So here we are in York, uh, we're in the parking light station at the minute and we're going to head up to the National Railway Museum uh, first and then hopefully we're going to go to York Station and see the South African Bittern come through on the Great Britain 6 Thrill Tour. So if we come this way we should be able to do something, I don't know, catch a bus or something. I threw the great hall. Touch it up, man. So we're going into the Great Hall now, which is uh, probably the most famous part of the National Rail Museum. It was opened by the Duke of Edinburgh in 1975. Uh, they've had a bit of a switch around. And if you go for a here, wearing the Atlantic Coast Express headboard, we immediately see Element Lines, a Merchant Navy class locomotive built in 1939. And obviously, you're wondering why it's only got one smoke deflector on. If you walk around this, steam engine works. Pretty much, you know, you're always going on about boilers and things like that. That is what it looks like on the inside. All in separate sections. These pretty much were the standard Pacific locomotives at the southern railway. And loads of people are still asking, will it ever run again? Under its own power? No. Is your, is your answer. Because pretty much it's sort of half scrapped and half not. Here from Barry Island, but I have a fit here. So I'm standing here next to Evening Star, which is a very famous locomotive. It's a 9F. Um, Slocum would have be our standard built in 1960. It was the last steam engine to be built for British Railways at Swindon Works in 1960. Evening Star was the only 9F to actually be named in service, although two have been named in preservation. Um, and if you look in the cab, it's quite, it was quite easy to drive with a left hand drive, which meant it was good for signalling and spent the majority of her brief working career, only five years, working on the Western region, although spending two summers, 1964 and 1965, at Bath Green Park on the Southern region. Um, they are like crests on the tender because the early emblem um, was deceased to be on these engines in 1958. And uh, the only reason she isn't in steam is because 9Fs aren't allowed on the main line, and I'll tell you why if we go down here. If we compare it to Element Lines, which we looked at earlier, that has flanges, which are these things here, which actually bolt up from the track, and my hands now covered in oil, on all of them. If we look at the 9F, the centre wheel does not have flanges on it. And that's so it can actually get round corners, you know, because otherwise these things would only be able to go in a straight line. Although it has actually done main line, there's been some crashes and things since the 70s, and now it's just a museum piece, which is a bit tragic. Anyway, we can't dwell on depressing matters. And even if it was allowed on the main line, because of the size of the driving wheels, it'd be only allowed to do 50 miles. You're allowed to do about 50 miles an hour. Massive. So I'm doing a backwards walking thing. Over there you've got the Class 31 diesel locomotive. It was the, um, very strange. Although you'd think it was a co co wheel arrangement with six wheels on each bogey, the centre ones don't actually drive. I thought it would get more power, actually didn't. But there's, obviously we're in the Great Hall now, in the National Railway Museum. And the... And the amount of... The best of the day. It's in here. It's amazing, because if you look over there, there's two Breslay Falls, which we'll go over and talk about in a minute. The city of Truro is on the turntable, which we won't talk about. Uh, and then here we have a massive KF7. Chinese locomotive built in Britain at um, Crewe, I think it's Crewe, 
in 1935 built 484 in a great locomotive. And this specific one, KF7, um, was used in China, although it was captured by the Russians during the Second World War, worked in Russia, and they eventually got it back, Chinese, and when it was withdrawn in 1975, it was gifted to the National Railway Museum as if to say, thanks for making it, so we're going to give it to you, back to you. I can't imagine why. And then probably one of the most famous of electric locomotives, one of Gresley's designs, the EM1. EM stands for Electric Mixed. Although they were designed whilst Sir Andrew Gresley was <laughs> still alive, designed before the Second World War, this particular one, the first one, wasn't actually built until... Um, 51, I think it was. British Railway's early emblem, known as the Cycling Lion, is there on the, um, the uh, side of the locomotive. And these are amazing because they were the first really mixed traffic electric locos to work on in Britain. Very, very, very good. And these were withdrawn alongside steam locomotives. So they worked. They worked alongside built steam, built alongside steam, and they were scrapped alongside steam. Amazing. Now, what we're seeing here is probably a site that's never going to be seen in preservation after Mallard 75. We've got two Resonating Falls next to each other. Number 4468 Mallard, and this one that's come over America. 6008 Dwight D. Eisenhower. And now in the R days, it carried the name Golden, Golden Shuttle and worked the three hour expresses between Edinburgh and Aberdeenshire. However, in 1946, it was renamed to Dwight D. Eisenhower after the American general for allegedly helping us in the Second World War. Which the act, you know, I'll explain more on that later. And um, it's obviously come over from America for Mallard 75 reunion, these six A4s that are already here. Six A4s that are preserved, sorry, there's four in, in Britain. Um, and you can see, it, obviously this is the first A4 I've actually seen, which is in Brunswick Green. Like, if you walk further along, the sort of See, obviously, the balances are clear, which was so BR could maintain these things easily. It's got a non corridor Bresley tender, which is more common on the A3s, uh, the cousin locomotive, if you like. Uh, and by BR Lake Crest. Now, obviously, this engine was repainted in America in 1970, it was sometime in the 70s. Um, but if we go over and look at the most famous A4, which is the fastest steam engine in the world, don't let anyone else tell you different. Mallard. 3rd of July, 1938. Descending Stoke Bank, this engine hit a speed of 126.3 miles an hour. It's unheard of by steam traction, because in today's modern society of smartphones and tablet computers, a Bugatti. 126 miles an hour sounds rather slow, but by steam engine, that was a speed that you wouldn't hear of. And there's a plaque on the side of the engine commending that day. Both the driver, Joe Duddington, and the track inspector, Sid Jenkins, said that 130 miles an hour would have been able to be achieved. However, they had to slow down to go through Grantham Station, down from about 40 miles an hour down to 15. And Mallard cracked a cylinder pipe whilst on the run, pulling seven coaches in the dynamometer car, or six coaches in the dynamometer car. I wanted to do my own work. But it's quite strange to think that the most famous A4 isn't actually running, and the reason for that is it's knackered. But it's quite, it's quite. Um, surprising that 75 years it's held the record for the fastest steam engine. And, I, and it's, it's strange that in the society of 2013 it's still here and standing proudly in the Grace Hall of the National Railway Museum as part of the National Collection. Got okay, taking a selfie. And we're going to go and look at the Q1 underneath.
So let's see what she looks like. I think we might have gone the wrong way. Wrong way. Oh, official recognition just picked up that bag thing. Tender, axle bearings, and a bit of graffiti. Well, that was quite good, seeing what steam engine actually looks like from underneath. So I'm going to pass the camera to the actual cameraman, which is what I, I would say what I pay him for, what I employ him for. And Quite an unusual diesel, diesel loco. Two types of diesel. Diesel electric, diesel mechanic, and this diesel hydraulic, more specifically, classified for two Western. Uh, these diesel hydraulic locomotives built for the Western region of British Railways. And uh, this one's fantastic preserved from the D1023 Western Fusilier. Quite a lot of people say Fusilla, it's not Fusilier. Uh, served in Biarm Blue livery and quite a bit of dust. Um, it was built in Swindon in 1963, as I just read off that plaque, uh, and I ha actually had steam heating valves in them, so quite a lot of the parts were from steam levels. But these were easily the most famed of the three diesel hydraulic locomotives that were ever built. Top speed was 90 miles an hour and the brick and they weighed 108 tons. This was... It's amazing that these were actually massive in that not a lot of people were surprised about, yet these still used to draw crowds. When they were in the maroon livery, they are blue and even they are green. And as you walk along the side of it, you know, you see the nameplates, Western Fusilier, these were all named Western something, and there's actually an example on the Stunton Grange model railway of Western Courier, which is also preserved in the fantastic Beyond Room livery. But, a bit of uh, damage there. That's probably been from Yobs, who've come into the National Railway Museum trying to wreck things, which purely is just disgusting. I mean, there's a couple of these that are actually allowed on the main line, which is quite surprising. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the cameras and we're going to go over and look at a steam loco, which would have ran alongside this, and that is the Great Western King. Are we rolling on this? Right. If we look up here, we can see some of the many headboards used on steam um, excursions. So you can see one from the Northumbrian there, this is the Cheltenham Flyer which is arguably the fastest steam service in Britain. And if I can find it... Find the nope, can't see it. Um, and then obviously there's some of the nameplates along here of locos that have sadly fallen to the cutter's torch. However, if I... You can see 506 and I'm sure that was the number of a Great Western King. But if we look over here, we can see a whole one. Thanks for some music there, get you in the groove. It's all about the recovery. This is number 6000, King George V, which was the Queen's grandfather. Uh, this is preserved in BR Green and very famous, built in the 1930s. And this one actually went to America. Went to the to the American the Wembley Exhibition in Chicago. Which was very which was famed for its engineering. Uh, and this is one of three kings actually preserved. Other one being Edward Edward the something. Four six oars as most of the Great Western passenger locos were. Well they all were. And again put the bell on it to prove that it actually went to America. 
promoted King George V by the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Company in commemoration of its centenary celebrations September 24th to October the 15th, 1927. Obviously, unlike when the Scotsman went over, it's got back. And uh, you can just look at it and see, even though it's not in steam, you've got your double chimney, you've got the dung built quite closely to the top feed, and it's got a standard um, church wood boiler. It still gives you a feel of what steam was. But the thing is, it's the King George V's, the Mallards, and the Flying Scotsmen that people always remember in preservation. If we go over here, we can actually see what is undoubtedly the most unthought of loco, and that's the narrow gauge loco. Built in 1945, this is one of the Robert Fenn's uh, Garrett locomotives. Now, if you look in the cab, that's one long boiler. And these can drive from either end. I mean, that's Livingston Thompson at that end, that's Fairley's Peyton at the other. Rebuilt in 1905 from a standard narrow gauge steam locomotive, uh, Festiniog Railway. Boston. Uh, when Robert Fairby designed the, his little locomotive, Little Wonder, similar to this, in 1970, these were to pull coal trains up steep gradients on the Festinlog Railway, where one locomotive couldn't, whereas this is essentially two and could be operated by one crew, so it got the levels of staff down. And uh, this, obviously, gifted by the Festinlog Railway to the National Rural Museum. And locomotives like this are extremely unthought of in railway preservation. And it's sad to think that it's only got one buffer. Not to do that guy. Uh, it's sad to think that these are so underestimated. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of narrow gauge, uh, as most people will condemn. However, I do think that locomotives like this are extremely unheard of. And obviously, yes, standard gauge Garrett's were built. This is the original type. This is what... This is what everyone thought of. There's nameplates over here. I'm easily distracted from this place. Has been given to engines. Hurricane, Exeter, Eaton. That was probably not so fantastic. So, I'm not sure whether it's a working model, but this is a model of that over there. These are quite good. That's why locomotives were named. Stanley <laughs> Tank. Again, quite un unthought of. Uh, 264T, this is the only one preserved actually. Uh, number 2500, there's a repaint. And these would have pulled the suburban trains out of London. Euston, Euston I think. Euston? Yeah, fairly positive it was London Euston. Uh, you can see the massive tanks that can hold 2,000 gallons. It's about 4,500 litres of water. Amazing. Uh, and these pretty much have the same power as an express passenger locomotive. You know, and things like things like your duchesses, although it couldn't go as fast. You can one of these. Look if you can get 50 out of it. Look out there, you can see East Coast Cretin out there. That's 91. Fantastic locos. And then what really annoys me is on the back, the DVT. Cause more accidents than they say, those things. Go around the other side. Um, these sort of 13 carriages. 
built in March 1934. And again, whole bunker contains 3.6 tons, which is enough for sort of a day's work. However, getting with me, any Thomas Tank Engine fans will recognise this in the 66 Aerolite as being with from the Thomas Tank Engine stories. So, it's been rebuilt that many times, no one actually knows what it was used for. Two two four, which is quite a strange wheel arrangement, gave it the classification X one. And um, probably the predecessor to the N twos. It was bought around here with the Telus. Tucson compounded, built as a two 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 well tank. Rebuilt and enlarged three times. Blah blah blah. That doesn't help. We'll just say it was used for passenger, okay? And anyone will recognise this. Rocket. However, this isn't the original one. This is one of three examples of Rocket in the National Collection. The first one, this is a replica built in 1935, but it does give a feel of what those early days of steam were like. And Rocket was actually the base ground of all modern, or say modern, modern steam locomotives. Because when James Watt invented the steam engine in 1801, it was just a long pipe with steam going through it. Stevenson redesigned it by placing 14 small pipes into one big one, giving this locomotive the eye-bending speed of 25 miles an hour. It's quite amazing to think that nowadays 25 miles an hour is what? Nothing. But in 1829, when this was built, that was lightning speed. Back then, you didn't have people moaning about trains. Come again. This, this is what I find hilarious. In the Victorian times, when this was invented, class systems were the bomb. This is the first class carriage. Parts, you've got plush seats, it's private, you have people you like. Go down a bit further, you've got the third class carriage. It's practically a wagon with seats in. Only two words. Oh dear. Mind you, on the bright side, when trains were like this, you didn't... Getting on a train late at night, you didn't have a drunk bloke sitting next to you with a bottle of Lambrini in one hand and a pack of wine gums in the other. Ooh. We were at a concert last night, come on. But I've got this massive zit and cut. Yeah, he thinks. Now, what I didn't realise was coming today that there's actually, a, there's actually royalty here. Prince William. <laughs> you, you'd all fall for that. Bloody hell. Right, okay. Here we've got Green Arrow. Um, V2 class locomotive built in 1936. Um, it's not running because of, of the condition of the firebox. However, they could overhaul it for £2 million. Pounds. So if anyone's watching has £2 million quid going spare. Um, Along here, you've got a 262 Prairie wheel arrangement, and it was the only class of locomotive to be built with a Prairie wheel arrangement and a tender. Uh, these were the V2's famous, the famous one is Green Arrow, which is the only one preserved. Uh, and these were known as locomotives that helped us win the war because of their sheer strength and power, although the power classification is 6P5F. Or something like that. Um, obviously, like most LNER locomotives, these are left-hand drive. And just because it says, cocks shut, doesn't mean that's an inhibitor. And, and obviously this preserved as it was in mainline condition, 
tender is similar to that Fowler's tender on the, on the uh, moguls, standing moguls. They use Fowler tender. Um, and obviously over here is part, another part of the time of the story. We've got um, one of the buffet cars from the original Flying Scotsman. And down there, I believe, is the Bitburn. But we'll take a closer look at the Now, Obviously, you look along here, you've got sort of very upper class seating arrangement. We all live too far right there. Don't put the piston steps to me. And all that. But it does, you know, it's wooden bodied. I know that. But these regularly used to run at 100 miles an hour in service. It's still a valuable part of the national collection. Merchandise here. That's lovely. They're all from A3s. And if we look over here, if we look along there, obviously you can see A4 Bitter, which is what we're seeing a bit later on. However, there is another thing I'd like to point out. Uh, and that is the sign up there for the Welsh village of Lanster, Quilgin, Gil, Gokri, Chin, Will, Drob, Will, Ansi, Silly, or Gokogok. <laughs> Try saying that when you've had a few. Um, yeah. And there, and it's the only one running that is in Garter Blue. Um, we're going to go and see her a bit later on on the main line. Um, owned by Jeremy Hosking, who seems to own every steamboat most not in the national bloody collection, and um, only one with a fake corridor tender as well. It's not actually a corridor there, but it looks like it's got the rubber. Not a euphemism. <laughs> uh, and these main plates here are all from Peppercorn design locomotives such as Vabcorn, FH Peppercorn and Great Eastern, um, Wilson Wurzel, Bachelor's Button. Uh, these are all from Midland region locos. And uh, don't know what it's from. These are all station signs and things. Silver Fox and Silver Link, that's from an A4. Silver Fox, that's from an A4. Oh, Silver Fox, that's from an A4. Uh, it's a Remembrance class, like out really. That's Duke of Gloucester's number board. And then there you've got uh, King, King Uther, is that how you say that? Which is from. Does he know what? That's Grizzly A M A3. What this is? Damn it. A bit of fun now. It's an English electric engine. Yeah, that drives the Deltics. It's amazing, isn't it? Or am I just easily amused? It's a sweet of the works. Well, I'm not too that one. Some models of locos there. They are standard tank. Uh, then there's a Jinty and a, a Class 83. Mark 1 down there. A little bit of vinyl there. The wagons. Amazing this, I and mean, it's so quiet of when I speak. <laughs> and in there, in there, I think, if I'm correct, that's class 20. Both in this crane tank, so they use in industrial factories. And got silverware from some form of railway. Model of an Atlantic up there. <laughs> what? 
Manchester and Sheffield. Yeah. Lincolnshire Railway Company. Oh. Pick any age. I'm going to hear quite quick because there's a lot to get through. Look at that lantern. There's got the train sets. Steamboat, and that's a model of a railway station. Architects model, Birmingham International Station, multi model. Boring. Moving on. Steamship again. Just so quiet, everything's so packed in. Me walking through here with my James May top on. I've got my dirty old school bag with my coat in. It's still an amazing attitude. Look through there. Yep, that is. That is a very famous English electric type one or a plus 20. Not even sure I should be doing that. And uh, this, sadly, is what's left of the horse punched by a Newcastle supporter. Um, unfortunately. Um, so that's going to make its way to the Findus factory. In the meantime, I'm going to go this way. So they got two in one there. Quite efficient with the gags. Golden arrow, that's, that, that used to go on the side of the engine, actually. Uh, yeah, double back on ourselves before we go up to the works and see the most famous steam engine in the world, flying Scotsman. Not Thomas, as the cameraman said earlier. Bastard. <laughs> that's bad enough we have to have one of those. It's the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway signalling department. What would happen is if I had a passenger train I wanted to get from here over to here, I would send a signal of bells up to the thing box there saying, have you got room for a light engine? Have you got room for a passenger train? Signal at this end would think, have I got room for a passenger train? And we then reply, yes, to the signal box down here. So, passenger train will be sent from here. Gonna have to go back again. Right the way along, change all the signals using those levers. Into here, and loop around and go back there anyway. And they've been trained signalmen how to do that for a hundred years. Quite interesting. So, this is all the railway memorabilia that people have just built. That's just, that's just a video of saying what I've just said. Southern well, West Country class. Salisbury, I've been there. That's the one there. Model of it anyway. Original ones at Shulman. Czechovacian State Railways Freight Loco 210. And that's a gas turbine. U1 there, largest locomotive ever to run in Britain. Actually, that's not a U1, sorry, it's an LMS garage. LMS copied off the LMR for everything, pretty much. E6225. I've got to go through it quite quick because there's so much to get through. And you've got to, you've got to keep on, on your feet. Yes, I know we're going to have lunch soon. I'm not starving the staff members. You can pay more. People are talking fox this morning. That's Great Central Railway, I'll answer. Bloody Raven. And that's Channel Tunnel Railway's link. Although, why do we take an EMU through the Channel Tunnel? I don't know. There's a Duchess. And behind that Duchess, I think, was some sort of open stock. And a check. Um, but I don't know what that is. Ah, it's a bull car, I think. Model railway, oh, sort of. And then there's just the other view of that thing. And then there's the other side of that Atlantic. And here, I believe, that's an Alamos uh, loco, which we might be seeing in a few minutes. A Midland railway, but then LMS. Um, 
I think it's a little bit of 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 a little no, it's not, it's this way. Awkward. And that's an unruly platform. We'll take a look at that soon. Again, demonstrating the signaling. They're doing something. Okay. This is something I've never actually said on camera. That's I feel really awkward here because I'm actually scared of heights. Another steam locomotive not flying the Scotsman, the great and powerful that she once was, and still is. Um, and here's a diesel up the back end. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. I didn't mean it, you know, was it? Anyway, we'll go and take a look. There's only two things on this engine that were original. So pressure gauge, and I can't remember what the other one is. In the main place, it's sold off in the 80s. Bloody Pete Waterman. It's got... Obviously, it's got about the past... 40, I think that is. It's working. It's got the past 37 over there, built in That's in here for maintenance. Uh, is having some uh, work done. Um, on the far track on the right, saddle tank. That's in for a full oval. Then the flying Scotsman. Here's the ADC of the cameraman. Uh, 